What's going on? Happy Monday, everyone. Hopefully everyone is doing well, staying safe, healthy. I hope you had a fantastic weekend. If you had to take a COVID test, I hope you tested negative. Test for any other virus. Hopefully you were negative for that too. If you did test positive, I hope you have a full and speedy recovery with no long COVID issues. It is time now for that Monday edition of the virus update for Monday, October 21st, 2024. If you're new to my channel, welcome to my channel. You just clicked on to today's virus update, where I talk about all the viruses that are causing problems with our health around the world, and we do give an extra focus to the COVID virus. The COVID virus did not end. It's still in existence. It's still making people sick. It's still wreaking havoc on our health. Whether you know it or not, COVID, if you've had it, likely may be giving you some problems you probably don't even know, such as immune deficiency. Yes, it can wreak havoc on our immune systems. I'm going to show you a little bit about that today. And of course, there's all these other viruses that are out there. The media doesn't talk much about them, so I have stepped up and decided to take on the job of reporting whatever news is out there to you from various different news articles, data from the CDC, data from other countries, all to keep you healthy and safe. So if you're new, subscribe down below. Hit that notification bell. Give this video a thumbs up if you like it. The more people that do that, the more YouTube's going to push out this content. Let's try for a 150 like button hits today. And of course, leave your comments down below. All right, we do have a few news stories I'm going to look at today. We don't have the weekly update from the BNO news. It looks like maybe that is going to be Monday nights. Last week, it was a Monday night that they did it, so... We'll see. Uh, we are going to take a look at something on my website. Nothing new. Just want to remind you about something. Then we're going to look at some of our daily data, new data from Walgreens, and we are going to take a look at a few wastewater sites today. All right. COVID-19 update time for New Zealand. This is something that we do almost every week. Or, well, I try to remember to show it to you each week. And they added 917 new cases this week. And it does say the XEC variant is emerging in New Zealand at this time. And it does look like, again, 970 new cases of COVID-19 reported in New Zealand over the week to Sunday. And five further deaths over in New Zealand and also there were 124 in the hospital though like it always says and don't ask me why I'll never understand this there are none in the intensive care unit I don't remember the last time that they reported someone in the intensive care unit it's been a long time since I've reported otherwise all right in Ontario Canada the Stratford General Hospital has declared a COVID outbreak in one of its medicine units. And yes, there is a COVID outbreak that is going on there at this time. It's the second COVID outbreak that I have reported in Canada. There was another one in Ontario just the other day. So yeah, it was a Thanksgiving up in Canada about a week and a half ago, well, maybe over a week ago now. And as you know, big holidays like that with large gatherings do tend to lead to increases in cases which can result in COVID outbreaks. All right, were you watching football yesterday? I caught a little bit of football yesterday. I didn't happen to catch this moment, though, and we have a problem. There was the Kansas City versus 49ers game. I, I say problem, but it's actually part of our new normal of the things that we start to see. Debo Samuel yesterday, well, he, he started the game. He, he did uh, just four snaps in the game yesterday had to be sidelined. He started the game with an illness, and after those four snaps, well, that illness got worse, and we are getting a little more confirmation, a little bit of an update as to what happened with that illness. And it says here, asked on specific nature of Samuel's element, which became apparent on Sunday morning, Shannon said, throat, stomach things. Just real fatigued, struggled to breathe, couldn't catch his breath, and so he kept trying to fight through it, but once he was struggling with breathing and everything, we had to shut him down. And there are pictures of him, I don't know if it's being shown in this article, but there are pictures of him being on the sidelines. It even says right here, Samuel was seen getting oxygen on the sideline at one point in the game and in the heat of Levi's Stadium, 
it was always going to be difficult for him to play in such circumstances, and then he eventually went back to the locker room. Yeah, just just a bizarre situation. I, I, really a sign of the times. We've been seeing so many sports players who continue to play with illness, and then things just get so bad, they either collapse or something serious happens. Yeah, and... For those wondering, yeah, I'm thinking about this too. It does sure sound a lot like COVID, though they don't list it, so will we ever know? I don't know. Moving on now to this. Over 150 schools may be affected by massive poultry and beef recall over listeria concerns. Oh, here we go yet again. Another foodborne illness, another uh, virus which is going through food. Yeah, there have been a lot of these, and there are several states included, Florida, New Jersey, New York, Ohio, Pennsylvania, and that's just a few of them. There's actually even more on the list. Uh, yeah, this is um, not a good thing. Want to read this full story? I tweeted it out and did post it on Blue Sky. All right, we just mentioned about uh, illness, how we're seeing all these bizarre situations of illness, whether they be COVID or not. Let's face it, there are a lot of people who are getting sick more frequently. I'm starting to see posts on X talking about, you know, people who are campaign workers going out to help for either side of the aisle, doesn't matter, campaign workers, and, and suddenly they're getting sick or they're attending ev an event. People are attending uh, political events and they are getting sick, whether it be COVID or maybe pneumonia or something else. Let's face it, in the time of COVID, which started back in 2020, we have learned a lot of things about this virus. And one of the things that we have learned with the virus is it can impact our immune system. Here's my website, datareport.info. As you know, we have a study of archives of um, our archive of studies where you can click on a section and it will take you to a whole list of studies and you can click on that and you can go the thread will link you right to that study whether it be from the Lancet or all these different uh, CIDRAP all these different credible medical resources well let's do a little search here I immune system let's type in immune and see what comes up well, take a look at this. Miscellaneous COVID studies. And mind you, immune system changes. That may become a section of its own because it's something that uh, you need to be made well aware of. COVID-19 leads to long-term changes in the immune system. Study shows. How about that? And then, it, I mean, on and on it goes. There are several um, different things here. Is there an association between COVID-19 and the risk of developing an autoimmune disease? Yes. I mean, there's quite a few different uh, studies out here posted on here. Some that haven't made it there yet. If I find more, I will add them. There's quite a few different studies that say, yeah, COVID virus can really do some terrible things to your immune system. It can weaken your immune system, which is not good. And look at this. Immune systems weakened by COVID. I'm telling you, there's, there's already several in here. So I think I am going to put together a section, probably won't be today, but a section just for these studies on COVID and the immune system. Alrighty, moving on now to some of our daily data and the pollen. You know, the pollen level is actually getting better. We only have orange in Texas. The majority of the country now is in green. Still some yellow in the south as well. Taking a look at air quality levels. Uh, air quality levels since last night have not been good for many areas. Hopefully when I refresh this, it's a little now. Nah, it's not improved at all. Okay, I looked at this earlier. I did a video for my weather channel, Climate Data Report, and it was not good just about an hour ago, and it's still not good now. Look at this. Oranges along the I-95 corridor in the northeast, widespread yellows across the Great Lakes in the south, and for those who don't know, green is good, yellow is eh, fair, orange is not good, red and purple are really bad. In other words, if it's red and purple in your area and you have asthma, COPD, or something else, you really want to try and stay indoors. I know that sounds mean and harsh. Oh, he's telling us what to do. It's for your own health. So, yeah, you do want to take that seriously, and until we get a change in the weather pattern, which is going to be really dry in the east, this is not going to be changing much. All right, you can follow me over on X for Climate Data Report, and you can see I did do and post today's video, and you can also go over to my 
weather YouTube channel where I did post today's weather video as well. Don't do one every day, but I do one a few times a week. All right, let's take a look at those EMS calls in Philadelphia. And no, that was not it. This is it right here. 747 EMS incidents were reported on Sunday. All right, taking a live look at what's going on in Montgomery County, Pennsylvania. And wow. I haven't been paying attention to this this morning. 22 EMS calls right now in Montgomery County, Pennsylvania. Let's see what they are. We got stroke. We have respiratory difficulty, vehicle accident. I do see a lot of fall calls, and I am seeing cardiac arrest. Another stroke, this time in Lower Moreland Township. Wow. Head injury, nausea, vomiting. That's not good. All right. Let's check Chester County, Pennsylvania. I hope it uh, comes up better. And well, in Chester County, Pennsylvania, less calls, but we do see not one, not two, but three sick person calls at this time. Yeah, that's not a good thing to report on. And now let's take a look at the viral activity level up in Canada. And we do see at this time, let me go back up here, that COVID is coming in moderate. Flu A is low at this time. Flu B is not detected. And RSV is coming in in moderate category at this time. Moving on now to Walgreens for this week. This is the COVID positivity tracker. And we can see here there is definitely some more red on the map. And I'm going to try and make sure you understand what the color codes stand for. Red means rising positivity rate. Dark greens would be improving positivity rates. And you see here there is a whole slew of states now that are in the dark, in the uh, bright red. But we'll take a look and you'll see that testing though being down in those areas, I don't know if that's really uh, the reasoning why the positivity rate's up. Because take a look here. National positivity rate is 16.2%. That's still down by 0.8%. Last week was 17%. Total test, 4,551 versus 5,249. But you can see here, we had a sustained drop from the second half of summer on. But now that drop, and I'm going to have to zoom this in a little bit more. You can see here, that drop, while it's still happening, it's really starting to slow down. We're really getting close to that reversal where we see this positivity rate starting to go back up again soon. Rhode Island, here's an example. Same amount of tests as last week, 22 versus 22. Positivity rate did go up 18.2% versus 13.6%. That is a 4.5% increase for you. Uh, Pennsylvania, 20.6% positivity rate. The prior week was 14.1%. That is up by 6.6%. And you can see here, it is uh, 63 tests versus 71. Yeah, that's down. Yeah, that's not a lot of tests. But again, that's not a whole big drop so it could be a combination of maybe some cases starting to go up a little bit and a drop in testing ohio we just got to go just a little bit to the west and well ohio has an even bigger increase in the positivity rate and we do know that ohio's cases um the drop last week was much much smaller 23.9 percent covid positivity rate for ohio 15.4 percent last week that's up by 8.5 percent 117 versus 136 tests not a terribly big drop i mean it's a drop so probably once again it's a combo of a drop in testing but also some increased pressure and transmission starting to show up in the southeast look at this georgia we're starting to see an increase there 19.8 percent positivity rate for covid the prior week was 13.3 percent that's up by 6.5 percent total test 217 versus 233 yeah testing's down but once again i think it is safe to say that is probably a combination florida you're still doing good in florida in fact your testing even went up this week why did it go up because well with what was going on with all the tropical systems, less people were getting tested. And, of course, that leads to, you know, now that things are slowly getting back to normal in Florida, powers has come back for the majority of people. More people are getting tested now. 11% positivity rate versus 16. That's down by 5%. 489 tests versus 325. Let's go to another big state. California, 13.5% positivity rate versus 19.9%. That is a difference of down 
by 6.5% total test, 171 versus 211. And then Oregon, take a look at this. Oregon, 30% positivity rate. The prior week was 14.3%. That's a difference of up 5.7%. Total test, 10 versus 14. So, yeah, it's probably a combination there as well. And to start with, you don't do a whole lot of testing. All right, let's take a look at four wastewater sites around the United States. Then we will end today's video because New Jersey, I would show that to you, but oh, what the heck. Here's New Jersey real quickly. Well, it's not going to come up. The point is hardly any hospitals reported in New Jersey. Today. I think it was 50-something. Yeah, You know they have 70 out of 70 hospitals. Let's take a look at what's going on with four wastewater sites. First off, Chattanooga, Tennessee. What is going on there? We can see the COVID levels there are still low at this time. RSV is low. Influenza A, Influenza B, HMPV very low at this time. Norovirus is low. And no issues with the other viruses at this time. Now let's do a uh, wastewater site in the Northeast. How about we check on Boston? I think it's been a while since we've clicked on Boston. And Boston, while still dropping, has leveled off a little bit. But your COVID levels are low. RSV, Influenza A, Influenza B, HMPV all low at this time. Norovirus is listed at medium. And MPOX is low at this time. All right, wastewater site number three, where shall we go? How about we come out to the West Coast? How about we come and do a check on a really big wastewater site? Los, not Las Vegas, Los Angeles. And we can see here, 4 million population. COVID at this time is still listed as low. RSV, influenza A, influenza B, HMPV all low at this time. Norovirus is also listed low. No MPOX detected at this time. And now let's go up further to the north. How about we come up here to Idaho and see what's going on in Boise, Idaho. And in Boise, Idaho, we find that the COVID levels are listed as medium. And they are still dropping at this time. RSV, influenza A, influenza B all low. HMPV is low. Uh, norovirus overall trajectory since the end of summer has been upward and that is listed at high at this time and hepatitis a not much of an issue no detections of it and mpox is low at this time already folks that does it for the monday edition of the virus update we will have another edition again tomorrow if you enjoyed this update give it a thumbs up if you're new here hey subscribe down below want to stay informed every day just subscribe and hit that notification bell, and I promise to keep you updated as many days as I possibly can. And of course, share this video with anyone you know, and leave all your fabulous comments down below. Quick note about those comments, I may be slow to approving them. I'll be going out to work this afternoon and evening, but be sure I will get to see all those comments at some point later today. Alrighty, folks, hope you enjoyed this video. I will see you all again next time. Until I see you again next time, stay safe, everyone, and thanks for watching. Enjoy your Monday afternoon.